the third video on Laplace looks at differentials. We've already established that Laplace transforms are a useful tool for linear systems analysis and design, and therefore you really need to know them. And this particular video looks at differential equations because they come up in a large number of engineering scenarios, and the fact that you can use Laplace for those scenarios can be very useful indeed. This is because, in some cases, solving differential equations with Laplace is far more convenient than the alternatives. Just a reminder then, before we start, of what we're doing. The Laplace transform is defined using the following integral, and that's all we're going to do here. We're going to find the Laplace of derivative simply by plugging it into this definition. A quick reminder of what videos 1 and 2 have done. They've derived the Laplace for a convergent exponential or a divergent exponential, simple terms like 1 over s plus a. We've derived Laplace for a unit step or a power function, something like t to the n, or even a power function times an e to the minus a t. We've derived Laplace for a sine wave, omega over s squared plus omega squared, and for a cos wave. Um, s over s squared plus omega squared, and we also did it for an exponential times a sine and an exponential times a cos. Finally, we derived the shift theorem. Now, we're not going to need many of these for this particular video, but it's worth remembering what we've covered so far. The Laplace of a derivative, then. We want to know how do we define the Laplace of dx dt. And all we're going to do is plug it in to the formula. So the definition of the Laplace is I do the integral between 0 and infinity, and here it's dx dt, e to the minus st dt. Now the main technique we're going to use here is integration by parts. Here's the rule for integration by parts. The integral of u dv dt dt equals uv, worked out at the limits, minus the integral of v du dt dt. And in this particular case, we just want to know how we're going to select the u and the v. If you look at the formula here, this e to the minus st is going to be the u, and this dx dt term here is going to correspond to the dv dt term. If we do that, then you'll notice du dt becomes minus s e to the minus st, and v just becomes x. So all we're going to do is use this integration by parts, plug the numbers in, and see what happens. So the top part of this slide is just restated what we've just said, restated what u will be, what v will be, and so on. So I plug it into the formula, and you'll see the integral between 0 and infinity of dx dt e to the minus st dt can be written as x e to the minus st evaluated between 0 and infinity minus the integral between 0 and infinity of minus x s e to the minus st dt. Now, if you look at these two formulas, what you will notice is this particular formula here reduces to 0 minus x of 0. So if you put in infinity, you get 0. And if you put in 0, e to the minus st becomes 1, and x you get x of 0. So you get just minus x of 0 out of that. If you look at the second term over here, you'll notice there's two minuses, so they cancel to give you a plus. You'll notice s is not an integration variable, so I can take that outside the brackets. So you end up with s into the integral of x of t e to the minus st dt, and clearly this integral is just x of s. So you end up with s x of s. And so in summary, this is what you've got. If the Laplace of x of t is given by x of s, then the Laplace of dx dt is given by s times x of s minus x of 0. A very, very simple formula for the derivative. So in fact, you just need to know the Laplace of the original signal x of t, multiply it by x, and minus the initial condition. Let's use that formula then, just to demonstrate how easy it is to use. And the question is, can you find an expression for the Laplace transform of w given 
that this differential equation governs the behavior of W. And all I'm going to do is use this formula here, which we've just derived. The Laplace of dW dt is S W of S minus W of naught. Let's do it one term at a time then. So I'm going to get 3 into S W minus W of naught. So that's the 3 dW dt. If I take Laplace of 6W, I get 6 W of S. I'm using a big W to, to give myself the transform. And then the Laplace of the 9 is 9 over S. So you'll see all I've done is take Laplace of every term. That's all I've done. Take Laplace of every term in turn. Now I can combine all the capital W terms together. And therefore, you're going to get 3s plus 6 into capital W minus 3w of 0 equals 9 over s. And now, of course, I can rearrange this to put w on its own. So w will be 9 over s plus 3w of 0, all divided by 3s plus Six. So I've now got an explicit solution for this differential equation here. Here's another example just to demonstrate the same technique. And again, what you'll notice is all I'm going to do is take Laplace of every term. That's all I'm going to do. So Laplace of 2 dW dt, I end up with 2 into s w minus w of 0. I then get minus 5 w of s equals 4 u of s. If I then combine common terms, I'm going to get 2 s minus 5 into w minus 2 w of 0 equals 4 u. That's clearly u of s, and therefore w is going to be 4 u of s plus 2 w of 0, all divided by 2 s minus 5. This example is just one last example, but we've, you'll see we've made the signal on the right slightly different. So I use the same technique and simply take Laplace of everything in the equation. So I get 0 0.2 into s z minus z of 0. So that's Laplace of the derivative, minus 0 0.5, into that capital Z, equals 4 over S plus 2. So that's Laplace of 4e to the minus 2t. Take out the common terms. So I get Z into 0 0.2S minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2Z of 0 equals 4 over S plus 2. And then solve for z, I get z equals 4 over s plus 2 plus 0 0.2z of 0, all divided by 0.2s minus 0.5. You'll notice I'm not trying to simplify these expressions at this point because it's not the main purpose of this video. What happens then if you have some higher derivatives? So far, we've used this formula, Laplace of a first derivative, Laplace of dx dt, is s x of s minus x of 0. Now, I can use that same observation in order to find the Laplace of a second derivative. So I've done a sort of shortcut here. So you can see Laplace of a second derivative has to be s times the Laplace of the first derivative minus the first derivative evaluated at 0. And if you then plug into that the fact that you already know the Laplace of the first derivative, you end up with this s squared x of s minus s times x of 0 minus dx dt evaluated at 0. In a similar way, you'll find that if I want to do Laplace of a third derivative, I get s cubed times x of s minus s squared x of 0 minus s dx dt evaluated at 0 minus d2 x dt squared evaluated at 0. Can I use those results now to solve an ODE, something like this? And I'm just going to plug the results straight in and allow you to practice in your own time. So I can write E 
into s squared w minus s w of 0 minus w dot of 0. So that's the first term. And then you get plus a into s w minus w of 0. Then I get plus b into w equals k u. And you'll notice how I've just been able to write every term down by inspection. And I really just need to know how do I define the Laplace of a derivative. Now I can separate out all the w terms. It's going to be a bit of a mess here, but let's try. Capital W into e s squared plus a s plus b. And then what am I going to get? I'm going to get k u. I'll put u of s to make it clear on the right hand side. And I'm going to get plus e s w of 0 plus e w dot of 0 plus a w of 0. And the key thing to notice here is this polynomial, this e s squared plus a s plus b. You'll notice where's it come from? It's come from these coefficients of the differential equation, the e, the a, and the b. And that may not surprise you. I'm not going to bother doing the solution here. You can see I can now write w equals what I had over here on the right hand side divided by e s squared plus a s plus b. So I can now solve for this w. Here's the second example, just for completeness, so you can see what happens if I've got a specific right-hand side. So here I can write um, s squared y minus s y of 0 minus y dot of 0. So that's the Laplace of the double derivative. And then I get 4 s y minus 4 y of 0. That's the Laplace of the first derivative. And then plus 4y, the plus of just y, and that's going to equal 1 over s plus 6. That's the Laplace of the right hand side. If I combine common terms, I get y into s squared plus 4s plus 4 equals 1 over s plus 6 plus s y of 0 plus y dot of 0 plus 4y of 0. And clearly, as before, if I want to, I can now solve by writing y equals whatever I had on this right-hand side divided by s squared plus 4s plus 4. And hopefully you can see the technique is straightforward. If you've got a differential equation, it's relatively straightforward to write down by inspection the transform for y. You may not want to solve that by hand, you might want to use a computer, but the key thing is the solution is explicit. And the fact that the solution is explicit will be very useful later on. Now, something that you might find useful to know in general, if you're doing topics within control, control design and system performance, you will find that it's quite common for people to assume zero initial conditions, or in other words, they tend to ignore them. And that's because the, in, the effect of the initial conditions tends to go to zero very, very quickly and doesn't affect what's happening in the long term. So they're not always quite so interesting. Now, because of that, it means that people will often use this shorthand. They will say Laplace of dx dt is just s x of s. And therefore, you will see that differentiation looks like just multiplying by s. Similarly, the plus of a double derivative is just s squared x of s. And a treble derivative would be x s cubed x of s, and so on. So you will find in control topics that this is the approximations that people usually use. And in terms of the analysis that they're doing in control, ignoring the initial conditions doesn't matter. But that's a different topic. You can worry about that later. So in summary, these are the things that you should know. If Laplace of x of t is x of s, then Laplace of dx dt is s x of s minus x of 0. You'll notice this is capital. It's the Laplace domain. This is lowercase because it's taken from the time domain. Laplace of d2x dt squared is s squared x of s minus s x of 0 minus dx dt at 0. And you can get similar formula for the third derivative, fourth derivative, and so on.